Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Focus Telescope. So this is provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this says urban landscape, animal plant, natural scenery, moon space. If we turn it over we have some specs. The model is FT10, objective lens diameter is 70 millimeter, focal length description 400 millimeter, adjustable tripod head is 15.7 to 51.1 inches. Finder scope is 5x24, lens coating type is multi-coated, product weight is 2 kilograms. So I just want to say I'm not an expert on telescopes, so that's the perspective I'm coming from. So I'm new to this so I can share my experience as to how well this works for me to see things. So let's get this open. Okay, so we have the tripod, the telescope optical tube, and the accessories box. And here we have the manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So it looks to be about eight pages. This talks about warranty. This shows the different parts. Installation diagram. It talks about using the tripod, installing the mirror and eyepiece, starting observation, expand functionality, preservation, and maintenance. Okay, so obviously didn't cover everything in here. You'll want to read through it on your own, but I wanted to give an overview of what was in it. So let's get the parts out. Let's start with the tripod. I am familiar with tripods, so I'm guessing this will be pretty familiar. Okay, so it does come in a cinch bag. So this is a pretty basic tripod. We have rubberized feet. We have two levels of adjustment here in the legs with some cam locks. We have a handle here. We can tighten loosen here and crank this to extend it. And then we can turn, let's see, this one here is our pan and this is our tilt. So we can tilt it and we can lock that down. We can pan it and lock that down here. And this will turn it 90 degrees, like so. And this does not have a quick release on it, so you thread this right into the telescope. So I'll slide this open, like so, and I'll set that aside. Pull out the telescope. I'll thread that on top of the tripod. So the tripod does have a little level on it also. So to thread this on, I will loosen this up and turn it sideways to give me access to the thumb screw. And I'll tighten that on the quarter 20 thread. I am going to try and get that mostly square with this. Now flatten that back out like so. Let's drop back down here to the accessory box. So here we have a Bluetooth trigger. So you could pair this with the phone to take pictures. This is a Barlow lens 5X. This is a green moon filter it looks like. We have some little screws. This is the Astro filter 465. Not sure what's in here. Let's open it up. This would probably be an eyepiece. Yep. So this is F 12 millimeter, this is H 6 millimeter, and this is H 20 millimeter. This would be the Zenith mirror there. This is the finder scope. So this will mount on the side. I'll show that in a minute. And this would be the phone holder. So you can mount a smartphone on here and clamp it to the eyepiece. So this will fit in like so. Okay, so next I'm going to install the Zenith mirror here. So I'll pull this cap out, and I'll pull the cover off of here. I'll loosen up the thumb screw, and I'll insert this. And now I need to install the eyepiece, so I'll loosen this here. I'll pull this out. So I'll start with the six here. So I'll loosen this up, and I'll put the eyepiece in. So that's the basic setup of the telescope. I'm going to read through the instructions, become familiarized with it, and then I'll do some demonstrations and try and capture some pictures with this. Okay, so I took this out for a couple nights and a couple times during the day so I can share my experience. So I have the Zenith mirror, the Barlow tube, and the 12 millimeter eyepiece. So I'll throw some pictures up here. This first picture is of a tree. So I just took it out in my front yard and I pointed it to the top of the tree and I took a picture. It's not great, but I wanted to make sure that light would go through it. So in order to do that, you have to take the cap off the front like so, and then I mounted up the phone mount. So I took this out and passed that through the middle of the phone mount and I'll insert it back in. It's gonna be a little tricky to line up sometimes, and I'll tighten the lens down. Now, in order to look in here, my head's going to be down here, so it didn't work well to have the camera mount like that, so I typically had it kind of off to the side. Now, you could just use the phone mount by itself. And then I mounted the phone in, like so, loosen up the thumb screw on the back side, and I move it until the lens is lined up with the middle of the eyepiece. So about like that. Now you can see there is light getting in around here, so it could help to maybe put some tape there or something to cover it. And one issue I had is this would weight it down, so I'd have to readjust, so it's something to keep in mind. 
Now I was using the standard app on an iPhone. There might be other apps that would work better for taking pictures, so you can do manual adjustments and such, but I didn't get into that for this. So I'll remove this, the lens back in. So the next picture I'll share is of the moon. So it does have the finder here. Now the finder is not going to line up exactly with what you're looking through on the telescope. For the moon, what I did is I just held this in line with the moon. So I looked across the top and pointed it at the moon, and then I tilted it up and down until I could see the moon in the eyepiece. And that seemed to work fairly well. So once you're pointed close in the direction, you need to adjust this here to focus it. And I think I was pulled out about maybe that far when it was focused towards the moon. So the second night I went out, I pulled it to about that position to help me find the moon. The first night I was trying to observe the moon, it was very windy out and cloudy. So I just had little breaks. It was very difficult to try and test this out because you really want the moon there all the time because when you're aiming it, you might have a cloud in front of it when you're trying to find it. So next I added the moon filter. So I'll take the eyepiece out and it has this green filter and this screws in on the back side of the eyepiece. So the back side is threaded. Screw that in there and then I'll put that in here. So that will help you get better contrast when you're looking at the moon because through the eyepiece, the moon can be very, very bright. It did clear up a bit and that's what this next picture is. And this was taken with a 2X zoom. So the iPhone has a 2X optical zoom. So you might want to find out what optical zoom level you have on your phone and zoom into that. And that will give you larger pictures through the eyepiece using a camera. So then later during the day, I had the eyepiece without the moon filter and I aimed this at a cell tower that's about one and a quarter miles away. And that's the picture you're seeing. After I was done looking at the cell tower, I found a random tree. I'm not sure how far away it was, but you can get really detailed shots looking at trees relatively up close, like if it's within a few hundred feet. So now let's turn our attention to the other side. So I wanted to look at the sun. So we have the cap that goes on the front here and there's a center cap in it. So we take that out and we mount this here. And then we take the astro filter and put it here. Now you don't want to use this if it's damaged because it will let sunlight through. Now I was hesitant to look through here with my eyes. So before I did that, I used the phone mount on here to make sure the filter was working. Once I verified that, I looked through and this is the picture I got of the sun. So I think it turned out fairly well. It has some dots on it. I assume those are sunspots. So we just had an eclipse a couple weeks ago. I wish I had this during that. I could have gotten some really good shots of the eclipse, but I'll be ready for next time. So I'll take this off. Now this can be a little tricky to get off here. You want to make sure you don't drop it. So this final picture is of the moon the next night. It was a little less windy and it was much more clear. Now I sometimes use the phone mount. Other times I just hold the phone up to the lens and snap a picture. So it did come with the Bluetooth remote. To set this up, you go into your Bluetooth settings, turn this on and pair it to your phone. And when you press the button, you can take a picture. That can be really helpful because when you tap your phone or the button to take a picture, it can move the telescope. So I had a lot of fun using this. I lucked out that we had full moon for about two nights. One was technical full moon, the other one was really close. So as far as my thoughts on this, I really like the telescope. For looking at the moon and other things, I didn't use the viewfinder as much, but looking at wildlife and such, I think that would be more helpful. As far as the tripod goes, this is not a very tall tripod. So I started off with this and then I switched to a taller tripod I had. I'm about six foot tall. It is nice that this comes with a quarter 20 thread, so you can use this tripod or you can use any other tripod. Also, the first night was windy and it was shaking a bit. A sturdier tripod might help. Now I could have used a chair and sat in this and had it lower, and that would have definitely been a viable option too. So if you're tall like me and you have a taller tripod, you might opt for it as opposed to this one. But if you don't have a tripod, this absolutely did work. And I showed my pictures. They're decent pictures. If you're better at photography, I think you could probably get better pictures than I got. But I will say, looking through the eyepiece looked a lot better than the pictures I showed in this video. You could really see the detail in the moon and other things I photographed. So I'm sure someone with photography skills or maybe the right app might be able to capture that better. But with this telescope, I like being in the moment and looking at the things and just enjoying it. So that's the Focus Telescope. I really like the versatility of this. It comes with the astro filter, the moon filter, multiple lenses. I found it relatively easy to use. With any telescope, I'm sure it can be difficult to find things in the sky, but I would practice using it when you have a fuller moon or maybe focus in on some trees or things like that before you try and use it with things that are further away. So in the future, I see myself looking at things at night with this and then also wildlife. We have a park nearby that has bison that are out in a pasture. I could take this to that park and I could use this to get a close up of those. So if you're looking for an easy to use telescope for a beginner, I think this is a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.